To say that I was excited for this day is an understatement. We got up for 4.30 so that we could beat the rush hour traffic in Toronto so that we could be there for 7 o'clock in the morning. Thankfully, Olivia was in the car with me so that we could take the HOV lane and pass most of the traffic leading towards Toronto. Now, once we got there, we had to get our media day passes registered. Following that, we had to drop off our jackets and boots at the coat check, and then we made our way to the opening announcements. Now, we were both welcomed and debriefed with a special announcement coming our way. Both the fastest car in the world, along with the man who built such an amazing piece of work, kicked off our morning with a little interview. If you want to see the full video, you guys can check the description box because it's about 10 minutes and it's an interview with Christian von Koenigsegg. After the interview, we were lucky enough to get Mr. Koenigsegg to turn on the Agera RS and give us a few revs. Now, not only was this my first time ever seeing a Koenigsegg in person, but for it to be the fastest one in the world was something else. Now that was a hell of a start of a day, so it was well worth getting up for 4.30 to be there for this to happen, because Christian Juan Koenigsegg and the awesome car that made headlines all over the world is here, it's there, and even if you want to go see it, you can see it up until this weekend. So be sure to go check it out, I'll have more information in the description box. You have to do my outro, why? Yeah. What about it? Because, I don't know, it just throw people off. Okay. You record the whole video and then bam, there's me. You can start the intro. No, it's okay. Well, we kind of already did start the intro, oh. but we're going to roll with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. We are at the Metro Convention Center in Toronto. So this is the media day and this is basically only limited to people who can get access to a media pack. So it's typically like, you know, news reporters, YouTubers, whatever, car journalists, all that stuff. So we're here. We went to um, whatever wing that was that they showed the Koenigsegg. Uh, Christian was there. He released the Agera RS and now we're just looking around and seeing what they have. So, if I see anything fun, I'll keep you guys updated. Our tour of the convention center began at Mazda. Now, they did have their entire lineup of vehicles, including the new Miatas, along with their other cars, and they also had a couple other cars that I found to be quite interesting. On display, they had a 1967 Mazda Cosmo, and that was the first Mazda car that came with a rotary engine. Following that is a 1993 Mazda RX-7 FD. It's the most desirable out of all the Mazda RX-7s that are out there. And if I'm not mistaken, judging by the paint of the front bumper, it seems like the front bumper was repainted. They also had a completely untouched Mazda Miata, a 1990 Miata NA. That also is a rare car because most of the time you'll find both of those cars to be modified. Now following that was Nissan. Now Nissan did have most of their cars out on display, but they weren't completely set up yet. So the one car that really caught my eye was the GTR. Surprise, surprise. Really nice car. If you guys have the chance to go check it out, definitely do it. Now each one of these car manufacturers was releasing and announcing some different cars that they were announcing for this coming year. Volkswagen had a new Passat, for instance, that they were releasing today. Walking by the Mazda booth, they had a USB stick that had a lot of the information of all their new cars on. So if you wanted to, you could take one of those and it'll actually give you all the brochures on there. Moving down the line, we found Hyundai and they did have this really cool looking concept car. It was kind of a pukey orange kind of thing. Now something that I've noticed is that most cars that are pretty normal to drive, they usually come with a very interesting color. Something that's pretty bright to grab your attention. Jeep released their new vehicle this year and this is the Jeep Trackhawk. So you can tell by the yellow brake calipers that this is a new vehicle. So by looking at it, you can see that it looks like a regular SRT8. But the difference between this and a regular one is that this one comes with the Hellcat motor, which is a supercharged 707 horsepower V8. On the same topic of supercharged V8s, Dodge also had at the show, or has at the show should I say, their Dodge Demon. And this is a car that's based off of the Hellcat, but instead of making that 707 horsepower, Dodge decided, you know what, let's give it more power. But instead of making this more like a, a street car kind of thing, they changed their focus and tried to make a car that'd be unbelievable at the drag strip. So this guy makes 840 horsepower, does 0 to 60 in 2.3 seconds, and on top of that, does a quarter mile in under 10 seconds. Now if you guys heard about this car getting banned, that's because this car does such a fast time without a roll cage. So this is actually banned at most tracks. In order to go that speed, you need a cage. So I thought that this was the most interesting thing in this section, but apparently, this is. <laughs> Find something you like? It feels like a convertible. Do you like it? Uh, I don't know. I've never sat in one though, so I was just testing it out, you know? 
The interior looks pretty nice. Oh shit, white. I can't have white though, you know me. Yeah, I know, you're dirty. No Our coffee, you're we'll messy. Screw it all. Yeah. Coffee? Yep, you got like. I like the color scheme. What the heck is this? Why is there a. Can you watch? Bend? Why is it? Oh, that's nice. Like that? Why is that there? <laughs> because it's a Fiat. Fiat quality control. Or the overpriced Fiat. So we went through Dodge. They've got the new Hellcats, both uh, the Charger and the uh, Challenger body style. They've also got the new SRT8 um, full sized SUV. Now, this is new for this year. They used to have the, uh, the RT. And this guy here is the SRT model. So it comes with a couple extra bells and whistles, comes with four-wheel drive, and the biggest giveaway for this um, is the hood scoop. Now the RT did have the hood scoop, this one here also has it. Now another difference is the brakes. These are massive. Something to note. Now if we look around, we've got Kia, and now Honda, and my girlfriend, and a race car. Now the Honda Accord sedan, the new one for this year, the 10th generation won the sedan of the year. It's not this car, but we're gonna stop and take a look at this. This is sick. So this is the 10th gen Civic sedan, and this is a race car pretty much. So the interior is gutted, there's a roll cage, there's many, many, many performance parts in this thing, and they had this on display. So I'm actually quite impressed by this car, but that's not all that Honda had to offer. They also had a few hydrogen and electric vehicles, they had the new 10th generation Accords, and they actually looked really nice. Olivia was quite impressed with them. They had a Honda Civic Type R out on display, and you can get right up to it and even sit inside of it. Now, I've always wanted a bike, and considering how nice they look and how this is even a two-seater, I would not mind one of these things for myself. Now, I'm going to be turning 25 soon, so this might be a nice quarter-life crisis for myself. Okay, so we just got to Subaru, and I'm gonna have a little rant. So every time Subaru comes out with a new model of their BRZ or FRS, whatever you wanna call it, they always come out with something that looks faster than before. Now, sometimes they do have other upgrades like better brakes and like that stuff, stuff on the inside. This is the, uh, what is this? Let me just get this right, BRZ TS. The way that they're doing this car is they're making it look fast, but it's not any faster by any means. It's, they're using the exact same, I wanna get this right, a regular two liter dual overhead cam, 16 valve, um, four banger. 205 horsepower, 156 foot pounds of torque. So they've got it and they installed a big wing, different seats, a nicer interior, but it's still the exact same power output. Like look at this thing, and they even put STI branding on the actual parts. So like some of the stuff is nice, but they haven't touched power, which I kind of find to be stupid. If they put the WRX motor in this thing, I would be quite content. So if they went ahead and just did some sort of performance mod to it, let's say they gave it an extra 50 horsepower, they gave it the WRX motor, I'd be perfectly content. Now I understand they don't want to make this thing faster than the WRX STI, but even still, what's, what's the point? I don't get it. Maybe when Subaru comes out with a better model, maybe they'll have someone that wants to buy it. Oh, but it's limited edition. Oh, well, limited edition. Limited edition. Let me get that. When it's gone, it's gone. We should buy two. Okay, I don't want it. <laughs> Which one do you want? Which one? Stop. Which one? Stop. Hey mom, how do you like this car? I love it. <laughs> That's actually really nice. It's beautiful. Right sit in it. Okay, come, come sit with me. It smells funky. It smells like a new car. That's me. <laughs> what do you think of it? I like it. Yeah? Let's see if there's enough room I mean, for that. It's a little bit overkill for me right now. Is this but... like carpool karaoke? <laughs> yes, it is. This is how they do it. I like the color. The seats are comfy. Yeah. Moving away from the Subaru Outback, there is this. This is the Subaru WRX STI Type RA. Now, unlike the BRZ TS, this does indeed have performance differences between this model and the base model. Now, not only does the WRX STI Type RA not only have a lot more power than the regular Subaru Impreza, or even the WRX for that matter, but this car not only has aesthetic differences to it, but it also has some upgraded performance gains. 
while we were leaving the room, we were able to see a Lamborghini Huracan Performante, and it was unbelievably nice. I've never seen one of these in person before, the Performante version, but it was beautiful. Before leaving the first room, I was able to sit inside the brand new Kia Stinger. Now, the interior was nice. It was pretty sweet, but I would actually love to take this thing on the road because that's actually where this car gets a lot of its credit from. Leaving the main convention center area and moving on to the secondary parts where we have more stuff, we're first greeted by a Tesla police car. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, it's not an actual police car that's made from Tesla, but it's a pretty sweet concept. I feel like no one would be really getting away from that cop should he be driving that. Now, the next part was actually kind of cool. So I started talking to this cop, really nice cop, and he was detailing his charger. Now, he was using the wrong kind of material and the wrong kind of cleaning products for it. So he was using glass cleaner on a microfiber towel to clean up the paint. Now, it was kind of getting clean, but it was leaving some really weird streaks because the glass cleaner isn't necessarily made for paint. So this lady came by later and she gave us a spray wax that's meant for the paint and it did a much better job. I never thought that I'd be cleaning a police car for a police officer at the auto show, but it was still pretty cool nonetheless. Moving to the next room, there were a bunch of awesome modified cars. So I'm not just talking about like rims and coilovers. I'm talking about like full builds. So some of these things are really sick. The Subarus that were found in the center of the room were absolutely unreal. So from both rally cars to track circuit monsters, they were unbelievably nice. On the left side of the room, there was a Nissan Skyline R32 GTR. There was a Nissan S15, a 240. And then after that, there was also an Infiniti G37S. Definitely a room to go take a look at. Moving on from there, we were at Ford. So Ford had a lot of stuff and a lot of their cars out to see. So from their trucks to their SUVs to everything. Now the back part of that room is where you want to go. And that's because they have all their performance stuff found in the back. So all the Focus STs, the Focus RSs, the Mustangs, and best for last, the Ford GT. While we were there, they also had this cool section where you could build your own Lego. The Lego characters that you could build came with different faces, different pieces, different accessories, and you could build them up to your spec. So my guy had a little race car helmet, and of course Liv's was the girl. Now what I found to be really sick is they brought back the Ford Mustang GT Bullet. And this thing is unreal. So they had this on the center of the stage, and if you have a chance to go check it out, do it. Olivia wanted to go check out the Ford Mustang, the GT. She found it. It's pretty nice, but it wasn't really something that she loved. So moving on from there, we would then stop by Toyota. Now Toyota did have a couple small cars. Now they weren't anything out of the ordinary except for a small Toyota rally car and some of their pickups were pretty sweet. Other than that, it was pretty standard. The next car company quite impressed me and they had their Corvette ZR1 out for show and it was really nice. Now I remember the old Z06 and even the old ZR1 for that matter. They were nice, they were very powerful, but they weren't really refined like this new vet. I was quite impressed from this thing. From any angle that you looked at, it was really good looking and there was a bunch of carbon bits found on this car. At the Porsche exhibit, they had their lineup of full cars. So everything from the 718 to their newest best car, which is the 911 GT2 RS. This is their 700 horsepower, twin turbo, six cylinder motor that is unbelievably fast. So this thing does a zero to 60 time in 2.8 seconds. This is the ultimate track toy. I would love to have this thing instead of the mini, but at the price tag of $340,000, that's not gonna happen. We then stop by at Mercedes. So we are now at Mercedes. Now, of course they have all their awesome AMG C63, C43, all the AMG 63 stuff here. Now they also released two new things. So for this year, they released their brand new redesign for the G-Class and the CLS. So for the G-Class, they released their G550, and I'll show you guys that right now. Now the design isn't completely changed. It's pretty standard to what it like was before, but they changed a few things. Now the CLS is their new car they came up with. Here it is. It's a pretty different look. I think it looks really nice. But that leads me up to the next part. They're, the reason why I'm actually at Mercedes right now they released something a little bit different. So instead of having just a standard fast car, they made something that will compete with supercars and awesome stuff. So they've got a 1.6 turbocharged motor. It's electric, it's hybrid, and it makes up over a thousand horsepower. Check this out. So this Mercedes has the exact same displacement as my Mini Cooper, but makes five times the horsepower. It's quite ridiculous if you ask me. Now, that also kind of gets me thinking, okay, maybe I need to step up my game for the Mini. Now, reaching a thousand horsepower is very unobtainable and it's not gonna happen for myself, 
but it's quite unbelievable what engineering and technology, what it's come to. Moving on from there, Olivia sat in an SLC 43 AMG. I then checked out the brand new Lexus GSF, along with some other nice Lexuses. Now, going to the Audi section, there were a lot of cars that we were both impressed with, from the RS3 to the TT RS to even the Audi R8. This is one of Olivia's favorite cars, and she was actually fortunate enough to sit behind it, and I was able to get a picture of her behind it. The next stop was BMW. Now of course, as you can guess, there was a lot of M cars. So the M2, the M3, the M4, the M5, the M6. Out of those cars, my favorite was the M2. It's a small two-door manual twin turbo inline six, rear wheel drive BMW. I thought it was nice and I even told Liv to get in the car and see what she thought of it. Now we couldn't go to the auto show and not stop by at Mini. So Olivia, of course, had to sit in the convertible Mini Cooper because she thought this looked cute. My first stop wouldn't have been the convertible. My first stop was the John Cooper Works, surprise, surprise. Now this car did get a lot bigger from the R56. So this is the new F56. It's a bigger car, it's got a little bit more horsepower, a little bit of extra bells and whistles, but a still bigger car. I was kind of indecisive when I saw this car and I couldn't exactly put my finger on what I didn't like. Following that was Alfa Romeo. They had an Alfa 4C, they had a lot of the Giulias, and they also had their Quadrofolio, which is their 500 horsepower flagship sedan. While we were leaving this room, we had to go by Porsche. And something that I noticed that was pretty crazy was this Panamera's front brakes. It comes equipped with 10 piston front calipers. Yes, you heard that right, 10 piston. Moving on to the next section, we found a lot of old cars from an old school Shelby Cobra, to some really old Ferraris and even older vehicles from there. Some of these vehicles cost over $500,000 and it was cool to see these cars in person. In this room, the one car that really blew my mind was the Ferrari. The paint on this thing was immaculate. Usually when you go to car shows, the paint is mediocre and you can still see some scratches. There was absolutely nothing found on this paint. Leaving that section, we found a little Hot Wheels part, and you could actually race your Hot Wheels on this track. I guarantee that this is going to be a crazy part and a really busy part uh, once this is open to the public, but because this is media day, there weren't too many people. So this next room is by far the best part of the auto show. So this is Auto Exotica, where you're going to see cars that are easily over 100 grand and up. We're going to begin with a Bentley, followed by the brand new Bugatti Chiron. After that, we're going to have a Lamborghini Aventador SV, the Super Veloce. We're going to have a Lamborghini Huracan. We have the brand new Rolls Royce, stupidly expensive. We've got a Fisker Karma. We have a brand new Aston Martin. Now, if you keep going a little bit past that, you're going to see the best part of the show, and that is the Koenigsegg. This has set the record for the fastest car in the world, coming in at 284.5 miles an hour. Convert that into kilometers, and you're looking at over 450. I might get roasted in the comment section, but I have something to say. This Koenigsegg isn't a beautiful and curvy car like an Aston Martin. It's beautiful in a different way. When you build something that is so performance oriented with few luxurious amenities, the design will be striking, low, and stiff. With the car being engineered to hit such high speeds, the aerodynamics play such a great role in the design. The eye-catching design, the flawless paintwork, the stupidly powerful 1 megawatt engine, and the exclusivity and rarity of this car make this Agera RS the show stealer and the new yardstick of all supercars. Mr. Koenigsegg, I believe you dropped something by your foot. I believe you dropped something by your oh, foot. Oh, I did? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I did, yeah. Thanks. Oh, thank you. Where are you from? Thanks. Where are you from? Did you film it? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> talk to him! Talk to him! After seeing the Koenigsegg, everything was pretty much downhill from there because I saw what I wanted to see. Now, there were still a couple other nice cars. There was a Tesla section, there was a Lamborghini, there was a Ford GT with the Martini stripes, there was a Ferrari Dino, which is stupidly expensive, and then after that, we got to the McLaren section. Now, my favorite car out of those is the one that was found on the right, and it's a very dark metallic red. There was Nico Rosberg's Formula One vehicle, there was a Pagani Huayra, and then to finish off the show, there was a BAC Mono. So Olivia and I both, we had very early mornings and it even came to a late date because even after going through all that stuff at the auto show, we still had another hour and a half drive home. 
Um, but we did have an amazing time. The people at the Canadian International Auto Show, they treated us like gold. During the media day, they gave us food, uh, water, there was uh, free parking, there was a whole bunch of extra stuff. Now, unfortunately, they don't have that stuff for you guys. However, they do have a show. There is gonna be more stuff because even still, um, on media day, they were still unveiling stuff. They were still opening up the full section. So like even Nissan, for instance, wasn't completely set up um, for media day. But by the time that it's open to the public, it will be. If you guys want to find out any more information regarding the show, you guys can check the description box. I'll have some more information down there for you guys. But if you guys like the video and you guys have an idea as to what's coming up, click that like button, click the subscribe button, and if you guys are as excited as I was when I saw that Koenigsegg, definitely hit that like button. But anyways guys, if you have questions regarding the video, or any questions regarding the show for that matter, throw your questions down in the comment section, and I'd be more than happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.